Hey guys, breaking down a round between Marcelo Garcia and Dan Colville. So Marcelo's going to immediately start trying to pass the shin shield half guard with grip of the collar and getting a grip with his left hand on Dan's knee. Dan is working to break that grip, and when Dan switches to control of framing with his left arm to reaching over top, Marcelo shoots deep with that underhook to threaten with the pressure passing. Dan's going to do some nice adjustments with his hip, and as soon as he starts setting up close guard, look how Marcelo immediately brings that right knee through, forcing back into the shin shield, never allowing Dan to close his guard. So within this battle again, Marcel works to get the collar grip and a grip on the pants so that he can step over the legs and does an awesome reversal here that we're going to break down. We're going to see this pass again later in the round from a better angle, but once Marcel has gotten past Dan's legs, Dan's framing with his right arm against Marcel's left hip. What he's looking to do is rotate Marcelo backwards so that Marcel would actually fall to the dead angle and collapse over top of his shoulder. But as this is happening, and as, as Marcel's leg becomes light, Marcel bases with his head and his right shoulder to switch his hips and he's going to drop his right hip now into the side of Dan's arm and that's going to collapse the frame redirecting it into a lever and allow him to stay on top. Now from this reverse side control we're going to see Marcel wrap his right arm around Dan's head and he's going to be setting up the north-south choke. So he walks his hips over top now he's going to walk his hips back, sprawling out, so that he's able to use his bicep to occlude the artery on the right side of Dan's neck. And then Marcelo's ribs and lat is going to be occluding the artery on the left side for the north-south choke. So next what's going to take place is Marcelo is going to hit one of his reverse arm bars, but he's going to do it on the opposite arm that he usually does, in the sense that Dan's going to post with his right arm to defend the sweep, and Marcelo is actually going to attack the left arm. So there's a moment of weakness in Dan's structure, and Marcel capitalized with that reverse armbar. So Marcel is going to elevate with the right butterfly hook. Dan's going to post with his right leg, and we can see how his arm is framing on the inside of Marcel's armpit. Now watch how that arm extends out. As Marcel detaches, he scoops it. So we can see that Marcel has Dan's shoulder internally rotated, pointing his thumb down by shrugging his shoulder and pinching his ear to the wrist. He has his arm over top of the elbow, creating a fulcrum point so that he can actually access the lever and put damage into the elbow. And now he's going to work and bring his right leg up. He doesn't bring it up as high as he normally does for a super clean technique, but because the leg is up here, he's still able to control Dan's posture. Usually when we see Marcelo do this technique, he's going to have it up where the leverage is greatest and where he's going to be isolating the shoulder so that there's going to be no bleeding of the force by... Dan's shoulder being able to move around and absorb some of that pressure. So Marcelo starting on top again. We're going to get another look at the pass that he hit earlier from the exact same situation. Grip on the collar, grip on the pants, and circling around, cutting over top of the bottom leg to beat the shin shield. So with the one grip on the pants, he's able to frame it out and stop Dan's right leg from being able to follow him. And we see how he's detached his right leg by kicking it backwards, and he's going to circle it over top outside of the range that Dan is able to follow with his legs. Marcelo immediately brings his right arm over to block right at the hips and block the legs so that Dan is unable to establish any kind of regarding. And now Marcelo's knee is tied up against the hip, replacing the control that his right arm was first establishing. Marcelo's got a grip on the pants, is circling around, and is now threatening the arm lock. And as Dan's defending it, Marcelo brings his right leg over top and through the armpit and is now going to start lacing a reverse triangle. Once Marcelo is confident in the control that he has established with his legs, he's going to release the arm to start grabbing at the leg to further break Dan's alignment. And Dan taps early, as this is just a nice little training round. So Marcelo is going to set up a nice little passing sequence here with pressure that we're going to break down in detail that he sets up right from his hip angle at the very beginning. Crushes the frames and moves straight to mount. So right now Dan and Marcelo are facing straight onto each other and we can see that Dan's knee is pointing directly at Marcelo. It is a frame and it's going to be able to manage the range. Marcelo is going to change the hip angle. So Marcelo circles his hips to the right and now Dan's left knee is no longer a frame. It's going to be collapsed to the side pointing towards the screen. Marcelo is accessing it as a lever, driving down with his hips He's going to bring his right knee up high so that Dan can't follow with a strong hook. So now 
Marcelo can shed the control and get that right leg free. He's going to now form a grip on the pants with his left arm. So that now he's able to detach and mobilize his hips. Now he's got his arm locked out as a frame, accessing Dan's left leg as a lever pinned to the other side. And then he replaces that control with his left leg, stapling it down to the mat with a frame. Now Marcelo is going to be able to freely move into the mount. So while defending mount, Dan's going to wrap the lapel around and it's actually going to cause his own demise. So this is going to give him some rotational control of Marcelo, but what this is doing is it's lifting his elbow up from the mat. And so what Marcelo's going to be able to do is form a knee elbow connection and actually control that arm as a lever and stop him from being able to extract the arm. So right now we can see how Marcelo has changed his hip angle. He's connected the knee and elbow so it's stuck and he's framing down on Dan's bicep with his left arm. Marcelo is stepping over top into that uh, diamond configuration threatening with that triangle but he's looking for the Mona Plata. He's controlling at the elbow right now and slowly adjusting his hips to internally rotate Dan's shoulder. And so what Dan's trying to do is find a time that he can rotate his arm out. And Dan's actually going to externally rotate his arm here, similar to an Americana, and Marcelo's going to catch it and finish with a variation of a monoplata shoulder lock. So as Dan's looking to defend this, watch his hand. He ends up pointing his thumb upwards, up past his shoulder. So now he's externally rotated his shoulder as opposed to internally rotating it, which is what Marcelo usually would do to finish a monoplata. Marcelo immediately capitalizes on this and drops his armpit to access the end of the lever, while he can now start moving his hips up so that he pushes the wrist down, pushes the elbow up to finish it exactly the same as you would think of the rotation in the shoulder with a Americana or key lock. Now for the first time, Marcelo is going to be playing guard. As Dan is going to aggressively start attempting his passing. As soon as Marcelo goes for that reverse armbar, Dan does an excellent job of mobilizing his hips and taking away that angle and using it to get to at least half guard. Now he's working to control Marcelo's hips while he works to extract that right leg. Marcelo's going to do a nice little base disruption there just to affect Dan's alignment so that he's able to recompose his guard. Something that Marcelo is so good at doing, always affecting his opponent's base so that they can't be effective. So once again, Dan has moved into the half guard, but now on the opposite side, Dan's working to isolate that arm. And while he's doing that, Marcelo attempts a Shaolin sweep, and we end up into a different position with the triangle. So Marcelo's going to form a butterfly hook with his right foot. He's going to generate base with his left leg, bridging and continuing that force vector through with his leg. And Marcelo's got a grip on the right leg of Dan's, blocking that leg from being able to post. And because Dan is attacking with that Kimura right now, he doesn't have the ability to post. But similar to what Marcelo did earlier, Dan does a nice switch here with his hips. He extends his left leg back so that now Marcelo's hand ends up going above his head and makes him very weak so he's going to be able to break the grip. And Dan's uh, left leg is dropping down behind Marcelo's elbow at that point. So for a very slight moment, Marcelo's structure was affected and Dan capitalized on that. Now Dan's holding this similar reverse triangle position, except he's keeping his foot against Marcelo's wrist and forearm. So he's always blocking it with a frame, accessing Marcelo's arm as a lever, making it hard for Marcelo to be able to reverse the position and shed that control. Dan still has the control of this Kimura. And so... Marcel is in a very dangerous position, and Dan's looking to switch his position now to come out to the armbar. So he's extracting his right leg, brings it to his shin or the hip, and then brings the leg right over top. And unfortunately, the round ends, so we don't get to see how this would play out. 